they've got a package that they're looking at. Basically, that's what this tells us, and uh, I suspect that it'll be cleared and we'll be back in there to finish our briefing soon. Okay. Judy, I'll send it back to you. Kate, it's sounding like uh, the, the members of Congress we've been talking with, Senator McCain earlier, uh, and uh, John Carl saying uh, he was talking to uh, Senator Daschle and others, uh, they seem to be taking this very much in stride, although as we watch it, it as you point out, Kate, this is only the second time uh, within, and it happens to be in the span of just a couple of days, that the United States Capitol has had to be evacuated because of a threat that they take seriously. Now, granted, we're in a much uh, more sensitive time right now, given what happened Tuesday, but... Um, I can tell you, Judy, that the, the Capitol, I talked to the Capitol Police this morning about security here. Yesterday, there was a perimeter that had been drawn around the Capitol, about one block to the east and the west, and two blocks to the north and the south of this whole area. Now, that has been changed, Judy. There is no longer that perimeter. They had moved it in this morning. When I came in at 6 o'clock this morning, they checked my car very carefully. They used mirrors to look underneath the cage of the car, which is something new. However, there was no perimeter any longer, so they had ramped down a little bit on security a little bit earlier today. Uh, that's, that's what Kate, I can tell you, but that is more than they usually would do. Judy? Kate, what are the restrictions? Who can actually come on the grounds of the Capitol and go into the building now? I mean, I know that tourists go in there, reporters go in. Who, who can get in and out? I have my pass on me right now, but there is a press pass that I carry with me at all times. That shows these guards that I'm legitimate and that I work here and that I can bring my car in. I also have a tag on my car. Uh, that's typical. All of the members uh, have press identification. They have buttons that they wear. All the staff have identification. Those are the people that can come into the buildings. Now, normally, Judy, tourists can also come into this area. Normally, they can also go into the building. Today, that has not been exactly the case. Uh, I think they've been allowing tourists in, escorted. They've not been doing tours of the Capitol. So it's been a little bit more secure than normal. On a normal day, if you're a tourist, you have to go through magnometers, you have to go through uh, uh, detectors to make sure you don't have any weapons. There's quite a bit of security here on a day-to-day -day basis. Right now, it's a little bit more than it normally would be, but less than it was two days ago. Judy. All right, Kate Snow at the Capitol, where members of Congress evacuated, everyone else in the Capitol evacuated because of a threat, a suspicious package. At the White House, also increased security in the aftermath of Tuesday. Let's go there now, and our senior White House correspondent, John King. John. Judy, increased security and what most Americans certainly will see is some dramatic steps just in case, the White House is saying, but dramatic steps nonetheless. We have been told repeatedly in recent days about the increased security around the White House. We are now told that Vice President Dick Cheney was taken from the White House complex earlier today and ushered up to Camp David, the president's retreat in the mountains in Maryland, a very secure area. That we are told to get a good distance between the president and the vice president because of what sources describe as yet another threat on the White House grounds. We reported earlier today that they had extended the security perimeter, again, outside of the White House. Obviously, they have not evacuated the White House. We are still here, as, as is the President of the United States and his senior staff. But we are told as a precaution, they decided they did not want the President and the Vice President together on the White House grounds. So the Vice President was moved up to Camp David. We are also told that there are plans for the President himself to go to Camp David this weekend, where the Vice President will be as well. So the President and Vice President John. will be together later. Judy, go ahead. John, the question is, if there is a threat, why wouldn't they put the President president at Camp David and leave the vice president at the White House if the threat is at the White House. Well, Judy, they don't want to answer all of our questions about this, obviously, because of the security measures involved and the fact that we are all still here, that they have not evacuated the president, not evacuated the senior staff, would obviously lead us to believe that they are, do not view this as an immediate and perhaps not as an overly credible threat, should I say. But just as you see the evacuation of the Capitol, just as we have seen extraordinary measures around the White House in recent days, they have no choice, they say, but to take these things seriously and to take some steps in response to them. I would also note, and I don't want to go too far here because we know some things we don't want to tell our viewers because some of our viewers might be of ill intent. There are facilities here on the White House grounds, if necessary, in which the president would be safe, at least they believe he would be safe, from a nuclear attack. So there are places here on the grounds of the White House where they could take the president if necessary, and indeed where the vice president, when the president was out of town the other day, did indeed go to a command and control bunker that is believed to be nuclear proof here on the White House grounds. Seems ominous to be talking about these things, but 
This is the circumstances we find ourselves in in the 60 hours since these deadly terrorist attacks. Again, the White House saying this was a precaution, but the vice president has been moved to Camp David. Indeed, uh, look at what these terrorists have wrought, not just the World Trade Center, not just the Pentagon and Pennsylvania, but look at what it has meant in terms of shaking up uh, the nation's capital. Now back to Atlanta, Bill and Joey. Judy, thank you. Many people said we're going to wake up to a new America on Wednesday morning after the attacks on Tuesday, and I think this is a reverberation of that, of a, echoing what Jeff was saying about different threats being called, and all of which has been bogus to this point, and we don't mean to underscore what's happening. But a uh, or diminish what's happening in the capital. Yeah. And, and if you think back five years ago, Joey, here in the city of Atlanta in July of 96 when the Olympic Park bombing took place across the street here, uh, that Saturday, it happened on a Friday night, that Saturday and Sunday, there were threats all over the city of Atlanta. Shopping malls and our subway stops here in town and shopping malls downtown all turned out to be just that. Un bogus. Unfortunately, there are people who would like to take advantage of the worst right. of situations. On, though, the level of concern, and it's still developing story at this hour, the closure of the New York airports, at least a ground stop at the New York airports because of concerns about some FBI activity today. Patty Davis is following that part of the story now, and she joins us now from Washington again. Patty. Hello, Joey. Well, the, F, uh, the FAA has ordered a ground stop at all three airports, uh, that's New York, LaGuardia, and Newark, uh, in the New York area. Uh, they're saying that is due to FBI activity. Now, what that means, a ground stop meaning that flights are not allowed to take off at those airports. Also, flights that are scheduled to come into those airports not allowed to take off from their originating points. Now, the FAA says uh, on, a, on a call just a moment ago that there apparently have been arrests, and we're trying to confirm that. Earlier today, LaGuardia Terminal, uh, the central terminal building, was evacuated due to a scare. A man, uh, according to the Port Authority of New York, uh, made what was interpreted as a threat about a device uh, in his bag. That turned out to be unfounded, but that person was arrested. Now, this apparently involves different FBI activity, different incidents. We don't know exactly what the scope of those incidents are at this point, but there is a ground stop now in place at the three New York airports. Joey? CNN's Patty Davis for us in Washington again. So there are two developing mm -hmm. stories at this hour that we're watching quite closely. What Patty was talking about, the, clo the uh, ground stops mm -hmm. at the airports, all three of the big airports there in New York, as well as the situation mm -hmm. in the Capitol. Yeah, watching the Capitol, Judy Woodruff informing us both houses of Congress have been evacuated. These are your congressmen and women standing on the lawn outside the Capitol building. The Senate and the House have been evacuated. We will follow this after a bomb threat was issued there. Some reports that a suspicious package was picked up and a dog had what's called a positive hit on that. In other words, the dog sniffed the possibility that that package could be more than just an empty package there on Capitol Hill. We will watch that. Any developments we see here, certainly we will bring you the very latest as we get it. Of course, the terror strikes in Washington at the seat of the nation's political and military power, as well, of course, in New York at the seat of the nation's, the world's financial power, and that is really causing some ripple effects to the financial community. We do know the stock market scheduled to open now Monday morning, 9.30 a.m. East Coast time, and for more on that, here's Lou Dobbs back in Manhattan. Lou? Well, Joy, thank you. Good evening, everyone, and uh, as we begin tonight, uh, we want to tell you that the three New York airports, less than eight hours after having been opened, have now been closed at the order of federal authorities. We are told that arrests have been made at JFK Airport, the international airport here in New York. We have no further information about who the arresting authorities were or who has been arrested, but we, of course, here at CNN will be bringing that to you as soon as we learn the details. And, of course, the U.S. Capitol has been evacuated, as we have now been reporting, the vice president being moved to Camp David as a precaution, and we will keep you fully informed on those developments as well. Thirty blocks behind me, the devastation that was the World Trade Center. Rescue workers now into the second day of their efforts, working relentlessly to free whoever is buried there, alive or dead, from the debris. Their grim search for survivors goes on just two blocks away from there. Leaders from all of the various stock exchanges and the brokerage houses met today. They decided to reopen the markets Monday morning, 9.30. The four-day closure is, by the way, the longest closure of the New York Stock Exchange since the Great Depression. And those stocks, of course, traded on the exchanges by people. Sadly, some of those people 
no longer with us. Reopening those markets as soon as it is safe and it is sensible is essential, if not critical. And a lot of people are working very hard tonight under the most difficult circumstances imaginable to do so. Christine Romans has the story. Christine? Lou, Wall Street will take another weekday to dig out and to mourn and a full weekend to test its systems before getting back to business, they hope, on Monday morning at 9.30 Eastern Time. The chaos outside the New York Stock Exchange, it's turned really into an eerie quiet. Security here very tight, police on nearly every street corner, but uh, there are still worries about unstable buildings in this area. Traders here have never seen stocks closed for four straight weekdays in their time. And for nearly 60 years, an unwritten rule has prevailed that you don't keep markets closed for more than three days. But fears are fading that an extended shutdown in U.S. stocks will create panic selling when they open. I think the time aspect is, is going to allow it to be a lot more stable than it would have otherwise been. I think the markets are comfortable that we will have an orderly price adjustment. There's more risk in the market. There's more risk in the economy. There's more risk in the global environment. There has to be a price adjustment down ultimately. But if that's an orderly price adjustment, we will see transactions start to come back and we will see the markets get back on their feet um, you know, over the next few weeks. Now the plan is to open stocks on Monday, but there are still more questions and answers. Can New York's tiny, crooked downtown streets handle the thousands of workers needed to open its trading floors? 3,000 traders and, uh, and uh, support staff are here at the big board on the floor. How will those people get here? Will phone lines and power sources remain secure? And will investors even be ready? For now, uh, many folks here say they're relieved and they'll take it one day at a time, Lou. Christine, thank you, Christine Romans. And of course, amongst the many challenges, the formidable challenges facing everyone downtown Manhattan, uh, those trying to rescue those who we all hope could be still alive under the rubble and the debris, trying to repair the infrastructure itself that will make access to that area possible. And principal among that infrastructure, some of the most densely concentrated telecom uh, communications equipment and lines in all the world. And that presents a major obstacle to the reopening of these markets. And Alan Chernoff is here to, to tell us how they're going to get that done. Exactly, Lou. And in fact, the building immediately north of the World Trade Center site is a very important telecommunications switching center owned by Verizon. Normally, that building provides 20% of the data circuits for the New York Stock Exchange. Now, the building, of course, is out of commission. Verizon is doing its best right now to rebuild that capacity. Now, a very different type of rebuilding effort involves investor confidence. And today, the SEC Chairman Harvey Pitt did his best to calm investors. This is not an economic problem. It's a physical catastrophe. People are responding to a physical tragedy. Uh, that should not in any way, shape, or form cause anyone to believe uh, that there will be something um, uh, sinister like a Black Monday resulting uh, from the uh, opening of trading. We apologize for the interruption, but we're going to go back now. Further developments at the evacuation of the U.S. Capitol. We're going to senior White House correspondent John King. John? Well, Lou, I want to bring you up to speed on a briefing we've just had with a senior administration official, not on the developments at the U.S. Capitol, the evacuation of the Capitol, but on the investigation here in Washington. Speaking to the senior administration official, no doubt the administration believes that the suspected Saudi terrorist Osama bin Laden is suspect number one in this. But this official saying one of the reasons the administration has not flat out said so just yet as the investigation continues is, quote, that there might have been not one but multiple organizations involved in this. So that one development as the investigation continues and as the president meets with his national security team again this afternoon to consider possible military strikes. Also, this official making clear in an obvious effort to try to build American public support and prepare the American public that even if the president authorizes a military response to these terrorist strikes of the past few days, that the administration is also preparing what she, this official called a sustained effort involving other governments to crack down not only militarily but financially and diplomatically as well, not only on terrorist groups but on nations that harbor them as well. And as an example of that, 
the administration putting extraordinary pressure on the government of Pakistan today, asking, we are told by sources, for the Pakistani government to close the border with Afghanistan, to stop supplying fuel to the Taliban government in Afghanistan, to provide any information it has on the movements and the organization of Osama bin Laden, and to allow U.S. warplanes access to Pakistani airspace if requested in the event the president does go forward with a military response. That is significant, of course, because Mr. bin Laden has his shelter in Afghanistan. A number of developments in the